Okay, so um, we'll start the 11 HIPEX uh, webinar and welcome everybody who is listening in live. Uh, today's session will be quite different because we have a number of speakers, so we'll um, try to summarize uh, the year in 2013 and also look ahead a bit into um, what's, what's coming next year and, and uh, both with the HIPEX portal and uh, with the, in general, in the hydraulical world. So I'll start a bit and uh, with a bit of an introduction. And uh, I forgot to bring a Christmas hat, but uh, I apologize for that. Uh, so the today's schedule uh, will be something like this. Uh, I will start with an introduction and then we'll, um, I will just say a few words on the major flood events that occurred for or from the 2013, and uh, then we'll look into a bit of what has been going on, uh, activities and development. We have the new HEPIC portal, and John Picardo will talk about that. Then Hannah Cloak will say something about the special issue we had on the hydraulic atomic prediction system. Then we'll move a bit, Maria Helena Ramos will talk a bit about the next edition in the same games and forecast. And she would also mention a bit about the HEPEX uh, science implementation science plan and uh, challenges for the next decade. And then to, uh, the last points will be on uh, the big meeting to happen next year. There's a big celebration going on next year. HEPEX is 10 years. So the meetings in the United States will have Jon Schake and Jutta uh, Thielen talking about that. And Florian Papenberger will also talk a bit about the hydrology week that we plan to have here at East India. And then we leave the floor open for comments, uh, and then we'll close for today. And uh, yes, so um, to start off, I would just, uh, as we do in Sweden on Christmas programs, you always light a little candle when you start your presentation. So this is to celebrate that we are almost at Christmas now. So, uh, just a few words then on, on uh, the hydraulic situation from 2013. This is a map of the major flood events. I mean, there are more, of course, but these are the ones that really had a big impact. And uh, as you can see in this map, we had a, a few in America. We had the one in Alberta. We had the, in Colorado floodings and also Mississippi. We had also in Argentina a flood event. And in Europe, we had the major events in, in June in, in Central Europe. We also had the flash flood in Sardinia and also in the Pyrenees. Um, we had a big flood in the Sudan as well. And, uh, but the major, major events happened in, in Asia, as usual. Uh, there was a lot of flooding in India, and uh, the biggest one was in North India, which was the, the most catastrophic event. So I will say a few words on, on that later. And we also had flash floods in, in uh, Australia, and we had also in Indonesia and in, in China. And uh, uh, just a, a timeline, just to see where, where these things happen usually as well. I mean, we had uh, the year started off uh, not so so intensely, but as you move into the, the um, monsoon season, that's when you get the real flood events. And uh, we didn't cover many of these events on, on the HEPEX blog as well, but most of the ones were focused on, on where we all work in, in Europe. Uh, we had the coverage on the Central European floods and the Pyrenees, and also on Alberta and the Boulder floods. And we did a m more intense discussion on uh, Florian's HEPEX webinar on the European case study. And this is also published in the newsletter, we think, but yeah. Uh, but of course, we can do more on this. Uh, we could have uh, uh, more coverage on the actual events when, when they occur. And uh, we will, in terms of the European floods, we will do a bit more in detail um, coverage of this as well. We'll, we'll write a tech memo on, on the meteorological and hydraulical uh, background, how the forecasts were performing, and uh, also looking at uh, how this could be improved the forecast in the future, looking at how different spatial resolutions has effect on, on the forecast. And this will be a, a technical memo that we could uh, put a link to on the website as well, to see where if this can be better uh, captured in the future. And 
the one thing that we saw from these events was that we are obviously not very good at capturing orographic enhancement of precipitation. So there's been you know, this ongoing work, especially focusing on the European case, but that would have an impact on, on all orographic enhancement of precipitation. To see what is missing in the model at the moment and how we can possibly make it better in the future. So just a few words on, on the India floods. This is from uh, a material that was pre prepared by the center on, on the request, just to see how uh, how far in advance you could see situation happening like this. So the, the India floods were, were very devastating. They, they cost uh, almost 6,000 people lost their lives in, in, in those events. And there was a lot of landslides also as an effect of the heavy rains. And uh, the areas that were affected were, were in Pakistan and India and Nepal. And uh, this is just an outlook that was produced for the European Commission, and it's looking on the um, 18th of June, the summer. And as you can see here, this shows the, the areas that were affected and uh, what the outlook is for, for the future. So this is something that, that can be prepared in a situation like this. Of course, then you need to have the material to, to do so. Well. And if you look at the, uh, the forecast, how well we could prevent, how well we can predict this event. Um, now we're looking at the rainfall and we're looking at the extreme uh, forecast index, which is looking at if the model is predicting something outside of the climatology of the model itself. And on the left panel here, we're looking at the 11th of June. Uh, oh, this is the story. This is the forecast from the left of June for the 16th of June and for the 17th of June. You can see there's a signal already here in the model that something is happening, but this signal really intensifies as it moves forward in time. So on the 12th of June, there was a quite strong signal. So the more the red, the more intense is the precipitation. So I would say that from four or five, three or four days, we had a clear signal that something was, uh, something severe was about to happen. And uh, we also have the global uh, flood awareness system to, to use in these situations. And this is a snapshot from uh, that model on the 12th of June. And you can see here that it, it, it's the area of the flood turns, the river turns up in red. We have a, um, a, a big event coming. And you can also see here on the um, hydrograph that we have, you can see the event uh, with the lead time. At least looking at 12th of June, uh, so we have at least a few days lead time. And uh, you can see that the considerable number of, of the ensemble members exceed the highest alert level. Not all of them, of course, but you can, uh, this is an ensemble forecast, so you can't expect all of the members to be above a certain level. And uh, this was confirmed as well on the uh, feeding day for New Delhi, North and New Delhi for, for the same kind of forecast system. So in this case, we can actually see that the event was coming uh, beforehand, but there's, uh, there's work currently now to looking into uh, how these extreme events are captured. And uh, I was just thinking about how we could do this in the Hepix community as well uh, for the next year, because we, we would expect to see more flood events coming. So we could always and put a commentary on when this happens. And uh, at ECNWF, we start to gather material as well. And this material can be very useful because it can be um, something we can upload to the website or, or um, use in different situations. And we can also uh, provide forecast data for analysis. Uh, we can't do all of the analysis ourselves, but we could always have PhD students or master students looking into specific events and see how the, the, the forecast performed to, in order to, to really try to analyze and diagnose uh, when and what we can do with the, the model, what we need to work on in the forecasting system. So this is something to, to think about, and I would like to hear also your, your thoughts of this, that maybe we should have more on the, um, more of this uh, catalog of, of past events. So that was just my introduction, the commentary on, on the, the floods that happened last year. I don't know if anybody wants to add something to this. Uh, 
perfect lot. Then I will leave uh, the floor over to uh, Jan, who will then talk about... Um... Frenoy, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Ah, because my microphone seems off. Um, now, just to say that regarding this uh, database of historic floods, actually, Vea, Vea Therese Romero was working with us. She started building up something like that. So she's really looking at since she's uh, since it's been more than a year now. So she's monitoring every flood that happens that is reported by DG Echo, for example, or any other humanitarian aid tool. And then she's also mapping what GLOFAS has predicted or if the flood detection systems based on the satellite have predicted. And it's all in that database. So that's already a start of that. And I will see how we could make that maybe available to the HIPEX and other people could complement on that. Yeah, thank you very much. I mean, that's, that's very useful. Um, <coughs> but do you think that there could be something available as well on the HIPEX blog? Yes, I think so. Oh, yeah. uh, so she can make a blog about it. At, at the moment, it's, um, I'm not sure how she could do that to make it more publicly accessible or if she wants that. But in any case, we can extract an archive from that. Mm. Uh, there will be from case to case as well how much information you would need if you will look at in more detail analysis of, of what, um, you know, the background on the metrology and hydrological developments. Okay. And it would be good to have that as like a like a like a table of contents what she's putting together, and then if someone has more information on it, they could drop it under that header. So we would maybe get the community to report also. Mm. Oh, that might be quite useful. Yes. Mm. Okay, Jan, I'll make you the presenter now. Great stuff. All right, let me just see if I can. Um, Frederick, can you see my presentation now? Is that up and running? Yes. Yes, all right. Okay, uh, hello everyone. I'd like to um, spend a bit of time to tell you about the HAPEX online presence, which has uh, received a bit of a boost of the last half year or so, um, and I'm kind of uh, structuring that along the lines of what I've termed here a hapex carol. Um, you may recognize this picture here, this is of course taken from Charles Dickens, this is the ghost of Christmas past, uh, and I'm just using that to give you some idea of um, what the hapex online presence was in the past, uh, and I have an analogy here, essentially well, we have a timeline here, probably most of you are very familiar with this, and we notice that every now and then we organize a HAPEX meeting, and we also notice that if you look at HAPEX activity, um, that there used to be a flurry of activity around those meetings, but in between meetings, um, we were pretty much dormant, the community was pretty much dormant. So at some point, um, we put a couple of people together um, and we decided to try and increase the activity in between meetings. How are we trying to do that? Essentially by building an online presence. Um, and we have a couple of tools that we're using for that and I'd like to show you uh, what these tools are, what they look like, and how you can use these. Uh, so that brings me to uh, the presence with the uh, goals of Christmas present here. Um, we have a couple of tools. One of them, the main one, the most, the single most important one is the HAPEX portal, which can be found at uh, www.hapex.org. Uh, it's a portal that we set up um, in April, the initial version. We is Florian, Helena, and myself. It is uh, based on a WordPress site, so the idea is that uh, you can have blogs or blog posts, and these posts can be about um, any HAPEX related topics. It could be announcements, they could be reports of recent floodings, um, they could be some commentary of something that's happening, um, anything really. Um, anyone can contribute. If you want to contribute yourself, just you know, send us a note and uh, let us know what your plans are, and we'll try to accommodate that. 
Uh, on the portal also we'll have a resource page, and I'll come back to that in a minute. On the portal we're going to have columns, we're going to have a couple of people that will write a brief commentary on what was forecasting every month or every two months, uh, so we'll have um, quite a number of columns hopefully starting in the new year. We'll have the webinars that are announced and that you can access through um, the HEPEX portal and we'll have comments. Uh, comments sounds, you know, as if it's something minor, but uh, really it's the comments where you can see the interaction between the community taking place. Uh, you can comment on anything, you know, relating to the blogs, and um, that's where we're hoping to inspire some discussion and some debates. Um, not unimportantly, on the HAPEX website, you'll find the science plans, the science and implementation plans. Um, currently, uh, and this is a, um, a statistic taken yesterday, we've had approximately 16,500 views, which is not bad for a website that's been up only since uh, May or April. Um, I'd like to single out this one page, uh, which is a resources page, which was um, put together by Maria Helena, and uh, I think she posted it online yesterday. Um, the page is full of resources related to HAPEX, including reports of past meetings, including uh, reports of past webinars. Uh, there's some links to software that you may find useful. There's a list of the special issues that relate to the HAPEX domain. Um, there's a couple of leaflets about HAPEX that you can use and distribute. Um, essentially, it's a very useful page uh, for you guys to access. How do you access our web portal? Well, there's a couple of ways you can do that. Of course, you can just um, go to the web page every now and then and see if there's a new post. You can use the RSS feeds, and I've posted them here. I will, by the way, put up these slides up on the portal itself, so you can you don't have to take down the notes um, at this very moment. Uh, but you can access the post through RSS. Essentially, you'll be sent the equivalent of an email every time that a new post or a new comment is posted. The other option, and I'll come back to the last two options later as well, but the other two options to follow the website are by joining our mailing list, uh, which is Google Groups based, and I'll come back to that in a second, or you can join our Twitter account, and I'll come back to that in a minute as well. But these are generally speaking the four options that you can use to follow our new HAPEX portal. Um, as I said, we have a mailing list um, which comprises a single email address uh, with which you can use, a, sorry, by which you can um, target approximately 260 members. Uh, it's Google based. Um, if you want to join the mailing list, if you've not already joined, you can simply send an email to the address here at the bottom of the page, HAPEX plus subscribe at googlegroups.com, and you'll be returned an email with instructions of how to complete the joining process. Um, then we also have a shiny new Twitter account. Uh, the Twitter account is at HAPEX.org. Um, for those of you that are familiar with Twitter, Twitter and have seen among the list of attendees, uh, a couple of names that are familiar from Twitter, so I'm sure that you know you'll be well able to find this. Uh, currently, we have 35 followers. We're of course hoping to um, uh, increase that number by a good bit. Um, the Twitter page is managed by Diana, and Diana actually has. Let me see. Diana has prepared a little presentation about it, which.
Yeah, and I cannot hear you anymore now. Yeah. Yon? Uh, hello everyone. Sorry, Jan, can you hear me? Because your sound disappeared after you showed the videos. Something happened after you showed the video. Can you turn on your microphones again? Can you hear me now? I cannot hear you. I don't know what happened there. I'm sorry. Uh, maybe you didn't hear what uh, Jan said in the end, but you saw the two presentations from um, uh, the paper Lee and the Twitter. So uh, I'm sorry, Jan. It seems like the, the connection somehow was broken after you showed the videos. Uh, but thank you very much anyway, and the presentation will be uploaded to the, the uh, website after this. Yes, that this technique is not always working. So I'll go on to the next point, which uh, will be a bit on the um, special issue on hydraulic uh, prediction systems in hydraulic processes. So I'll give the word to uh, Hannah, and uh, you will be using Florian's microphone, I guess. So Hannah, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. yeah and I'll put. Uh, Hold on, I'm just going to share my desktop here.
and then here is the uh, slide. So go ahead. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, I hear you. Still having a lot of problems, so if we disappear suddenly. Well, wishing everybody a Merry Christmas. Um, just like to tell you about something that happened at the beginning of this year, which was our special issue on hydrological ensemble prediction system, which came out in hydrological processes. And it really was a HEPEX effort um, by myself and Florian and Don um, and Yuta and Chakshan and Maria Elena. And it's an open access volume, so that's really excellent that hydrological processes decided that um, ours was the best to pick for the year, um, so everybody can get hold of the articles. The research came out of four HEPEX related meetings that were held in 2011. There was a HEPEX international workshop at UNESCO ID in June, and that was on post processing and verification. And then we had the EGU uh, General Assembly in Vienna. Uh, session, uh, the EFAS user meeting, and the international workshop on Hertz in Grenoble in April. So next slide please, Fred. And there are three big science themes that the special issue covers, uh, which is reflected in the community effort really. Um, the first is advances in evaluating and incorporating meteorological uncertainty. Uh, there was some looking at probabilistic evaluation of ensemble discharge now cast in the Alps and flash floods, and again, the, the bottom one there again, flash floods, and also looking at different ways of assessing probabilistic flow prediction. Next slide, please. The second one was looking at this post-processing, so one of the meetings was specifically on post-processing, so there was a lot of talk about that. Um, we looked at um, uh, this, the NSET GFS there, a spatially disaggregated global ensemble rainfall forecast, tree structure generation, um, Non-parametric processes for bias correction uh, and ensemble dressing. So, a lot of different methods there. Very, very interesting that set of papers. Next slide, please, Chris. And our third time theme was on communicating uncertainty. So, uh, different ways. So, there was, there was this peak box approach from uh, our excellent colleagues. Um, different ways of visualizing probabilistic flood forecast information, looking at expert references and perceptions there based on uh, EFAS. Workshop, another EFAS paper on communication, communication and perception and use of ensemble predictions, uh, and lastly, post processing hydrological ensemble predictions in a, in a inter comparison experiment. So, some, that was a scientific briefing looking at how far we've got in HEPEX, really. And then, lastly, there's a very excellent HP Today article looking on why we might not want to search for perfection in sub forecasting that I recommend you all have a little read of. Uh, so, do advertise that to your colleagues and do have a look yourself if you haven't had a look at those papers. They were written up in 2012, um, and, but uh, really it takes the time for everyone to get hold of this information. And some, some of it's um, been superseded by other papers by these authors, but uh, this is definitely something we should think about as a community again, doing another special issue, um, maybe in hydrological processes or elsewhere, with this in mind. Okay, thanks, Fred. Thank you very much, Hannah. Uh, maybe I should also mention that we, uh, there's another special issue coming out very soon in HES on data simulation, and Albert Wirtz will talk about that in the webinar uh, beginning of next year. And uh, so we'll move on to the next point, which is then Maria Helena. So I'll give the floor to you, Maria Helena. Maria Elena? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, now we can hear you. And see you as well. Thank you. At least your presentation, we don't see you yet. Now we do. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Ho, 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 everybody. So, we am, I'm talking about uh, playing games with forecast. Uh, we decided some years ago that uh, we could spend some time, uh, uh, and we spent some time a bit busy with uh, in the last years by making some games. 
So our main concern or, or that we were worried about how to improve the usefulness of our hydrological forecast in decision making. So we wanted to link uh, uh, quality in our forecast to the to the usefulness to make it useful for our forecast. And that's why we started making some games. There are two games now available to the community. You can go to the resource page uh, that is now published on the DPEX uh, website. And uh, there is a flood control game where we ask the question, the question, do probabilistic forecasts lead to better decisions? We have the water management game where the question, main question is how do I empty my reservoir given probabilistic seasonal forecasts? These games were played. People were invited to try them themselves. Uh, and they did it. They enjoy it. Uh, and you can see all the happiness in EDU by uh, raising hands. So we have the flood control game being played uh, at EGU 2012. You can also uh, download this game and play yourself. You have, um, we have the water management game played at EGU 2013. And you can see also PDF file and a worksheet that you can download from the website. Well, what we have learned with this game is, first of all, that players are somehow more towards the risk averse attitude when they decide to make decisions without the probability information. We have learned that they are more, uh, there are more coherent answers among individual decision makers in the presence of uncertainty. And we also saw that there are even highly experienced hydrologists may get game fired that happened to us with our volunteer in 2013, this year at the GU. If they don't pay attention to empty the reservoirs at times, given the forecast. Well, the basic principle, if you want to also prepare one for 2014, you're highly invited, welcome. And the, the basic principle is that we uh, think that we can uh, create knowledge by sharing our knowledge and using it uh, together with the community. There are some uh, rules that can help, some tips that can help you if you're thinking about creating a game. Uh, first of all, from our experience, we saw that we have to identify, identify the user's goals, define the actions that are available to the decision maker, identify the relevant information that we have to give for the problem, including a decision rule that has to be very clear and a payoff function. Identify also the possible future and unknown events that are may happen and the current probabilities associated with them. We have also to specify the consequence and give each action fair event and so on. And then following this, more or less these rules, you can uh, build your own game and uh, give it uh, to us so you can play together. You can contact us, so Florian, Shaitian, or myself, and the other members of the DPEX community. You're invited to share your game with us, uh, with DPEX. Play it with us at EGU, for instance, at CPEX the 10 year workshop. You are going to talk more about this workshop at EGU session, so you're invited to play the game. And I wish you all happy holidays also. Thank you. Thank you, Marlena. Uh, do you also want to say something about the uh, science implementation plan as well? Yes, can I go? Yes, you now? can go. Yeah. Well, I must tell you that it's very difficult to be Santa Claus in the summertime. <laughs> it's not very easy, but I think I, think I can do uh, five minutes more now. <laughs> well, uh, I was uh, also asked to talk in the name of Andy about the science and implementation plan and the challenges for the next decade. So uh, we uh, think about challenges as a difficult fact, but also as victories that we can achieve. Well, if you think about HIPEX 10 years ago, if you go back in our resource page, you can find it in the first uh, workshop of HIPEX in 2003. So that's uh, one of the slides. Don't probably recognize it or other members of the HIPEX community. Well, HIPEX is your HIPEX. Let's build it. And that's what we had at that time. And that's how it started and started being built. And today we have six stops that we uh, uh, identified in food and pre-processing, ensemble techniques and post-process modeling, data simulation, post-processing, 
clarification and communication and use in the decision making. Of course, this uh, stops the uh, uh, raise all the questions and bring other points. And around the six, six uh, stops, we are building the science and implementation plan. We have um, uh, decided to do it with a shared discussion in the community. So you can also go to our website and find under the category science plan, find all the posts that we have read uh, uh, in our in our website. So we have posts on post processing made by Jan, myself, and Natalie. We have posts on communication and decision-making made by Florian, and posts on verification, uh, very interesting clarifications about how to verify, when to verify, that were uh, provided by Julie and Jane. And we also have this, the top data simulation that was provided by Liu, Avram, and Hamid. So you can find a lot of information there and also what we're expecting also here is that you can bring your own contribution to our uh, science and implementation plan. We are going to discuss it more on the workshop, in your workshop, and uh, we'd like you also to, to bring your own contribution to our group. Thank you, Fred. I think uh, that's all. Uh, thank you, Maria Elena. Uh, we could take off the beer now. <laughs> uh, so you. Uh, lead us very nicely into the next topic, which will be the um, 10th anniversary of EPEX. So I leave the word now to uh, to John to say a few words on EPEX in terms of the 10 years that we've been in existence. So John? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. One, the, uh, there, on the, uh, let me see if I can get this right. Uh, Jan mentioned the blog, and on that blog there is uh, all the information about different HAPEX activities. There's a, a pointer to the to the 10th anniversary workshop, and you can actually click on uh, go to. There's a web page that's been someone has put together for the workshop, and you can click on that and get all the information. The workshop is scheduled for the in June of uh, of 2014, uh, the 24th to the 26th of June, and uh, it will be at uh, in Maryland at the new um, uh, National Weather Service uh, National Centers for Environmental Prediction um, uh, a facility, a facility they have a really nice uh, meeting room. Uh, <clears throat> and they've been very kind to offer to host this. The um, web page has a lot of information about the topics, uh, about the uh, agenda, the submission of the abstracts, and information about the venue, and organization and contacts. So I, if you, I hope uh, many of you will come to this. It should be an interesting opportunity. Uh, one thing that uh, Maria Helena just uh, inspired me about this meeting with her presentation about the games is that um, the group that's organizing this hasn't been connected to the game side of things. So we need to get them connected because I think that if we could have some time there to look at these games, it would make what we're trying to do so much more real for everyone. And so we could all participate in this. So, um, I'm looking forward to that, and, and that will that should make this a lot of fun as well. But it's a, a great location. We have a lot of things to look at, and uh, it'll be nice to celebrate. It's been 10 years since we started this project uh, or this activity, and I'm amazed, absolutely amazed, what all of you have done with it. And I encourage you to continue to do it and to help make this workshop be uh, a nice celebration of all these activities. So if you have ideas, by the way, any of you have ideas about what maybe uh, should uh, be included after you look at the web page and what we're doing to we'll set that up, uh, please let us know. By the way, the uh, deadline for abstracts is uh, the end of January, 31st of January. So uh, please submit some uh, something to it uh, to make sure that we look that the workshop looks at things you think matter still. Thank you.
Did you hear any of that? Yes, I did. Sorry. Uh, very well. Uh, I'm just going to put up the, the website uh, on my screen to see if you can see that. So there you have it. It's on the web HEPEX website. And uh, uh, Yurta, do you want to say anything more about the workshop? Uh, yes. Do you hear me? Yes, I hear you. OK. Well, uh, hello, everybody. And uh, thanks, Maria Elena, for all the effort that you put in on the web page and also um, for posting the, uh, the the announcement and the circulars of the HEPEX page on um, on the on the www.hepex.org. I think that's great. And without Maria Elena, probably we wouldn't be, have been there so fast. So thank you very much for helping to organize that. And it's probably the first time that I have to contradict John uh, in the sense that they're not connected to the games community because in fact the games has a central place in our new in the next workshop, John. So we're really uh, planning to do that. And I wonder, Frederick, if you could put up my screen. Could you put uh, that up? But then I can talk a bit more about how we're planning this workshop. I do it now. So if you share your desktop, you can, uh, you can see your screen as well. Can you see it? No, you have to click on the share my desktop on the uh, WebEx. Uh, OK. There we go. Now we see your screen. Okay, excellent. So John mentioned already that uh, it's the NOAA this time that was uh, kind to host this workshop. This is great in the new premises. So we're really looking forward to that. And the pictures look excellent. And uh, the organization also seems to be very nice. So there will be some more news following on the HIPEX decade. And this year, or this workshop, we really try to put a focus on the end users. And we want to do that already by targeting end users on the first day, really. And the way that we set up this workshop was that we want to ensure to have enough discussions and that we have enough time, really, to play games and to share training material and to really get that the people talk to each other. So we will really start with some welcome speeches. And I'm we're very much looking forward to having a nice piece of John there, I guess, so to talk about the 10 years of Apex that uh, he kicked off, which is great. And I uh, also want to start already on the first day, on the first day to look back in the past, but also to look forward, just so to get people thinking. And then the idea is that every session is organized um, by, so will be followed by a panel. So there will be an overview talk of one speaker that within 10 minutes is going to summarize uh, the topic of the session. Then we have 15 minute presentations on different uh, topics. So we have already some indicated here, but obviously, um, these may change depending on the, uh, on the uh, contributions that we get. Okay. So the first day we want to really talk about the end user needs in floods, but also related to flash flood droughts and, and water resource management. So really look at it from different perspectives. Um, and then there will be different contributions to that. And then at the end, we will wrap it up again in a discussion. And the idea is that in the panel talk, we say what we are expecting. And then in the discussion afterwards, ask the audience if really we are responding to, for example, the end user needs. So like that, we hope that we simulate a lot of discussion um, and not be too saturated with the talk, but that we really wrap it in a, in a structure. So first day should be on the end user needs. And the, uh, the communication of uncertainty to experts, civil protection, and the public. So, what are the different aspects that we have there? And so, you see, for example, the panel discussion with NB, if our communication is really properly understood by the different end users. And we do hope that we get a good mix of participants from the different communities, again, which I think has always been the, um, the aim of HEPEX. And someone just mentioned the Boulder workshop in 2005, I think that was already, I was quite impressed there already that we got all the different uh, communities represented. Day two should then be really on um, uncertainty. So perhaps for scientists, experts, and decision makers, how do we deal with uncertainty? Where are the uncertainties? Do we need to uh, write a whole range or do we need sharp or rather the, like, include everything but no sharpness? Uh, what are the uncertainty ranges that are accept acceptable? And how do we make decisions based on that? 
And then uh, the next day, so the last day, would then really be on the systems. But this is still quite empty, so we didn't come that far. But so there we want to really have examples of different systems where uh, ensemble predictions have been implemented. And I do hope also, again, that we get there um, examples, for example, for flash floods, but for normal river run floods, or but also for any other kind of applications in drought, for example, or weather war management. So I do hope that we get a wide breadth of uh, examples there. And then, as you see here, we always want to end the day, so really leave sufficient time at the end of the day, uh, two parallel sessions. We're not really sure yet how we are going to construct that. So we're waiting there for the contributions. And as John said, we really invite everybody to come out and uh, invite people that have games or that have uh, specific lectures on how to use ensembles or any systems that they can demonstrate. So this should really be there for people to walk around, look at different uh, applications, play different games, uh, and come to know each other. So we really trying to include that initiative of Maria Elena, and of course we count a lot on Maria Elena and Jan and Jan Scheidt and uh, all of you to present their your material and come out with a whole bag of uh, new applications after that workshop. And then at the very end of the workshop, we also want to look ahead, I'm not sure if I have this here, uh, very much at the end that you really look at the innovation and new ideas, which should then feed into the science implementation plan, of course. So I do hope that we get a really exciting workshop. As John said, the uh, deadline is end of January for handing in short abstracts. Um, we will then review them, inform the people that they can make their arrangements. And I'm sure that Rob Hartman and Ken Perel are really um, organizing this really well on the, uh, on the logistics side. So we're really looking very much forward to that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jutta. So I hope to see all of you there in, in next year in the United States. So we're going towards the end of this webinar now. And um, before we end it, I will just give the word to Florian to say uh, just a few words about another meeting that will take place next year. So let me get the slide up here. Uh, it's just one slide. So Florian. Mm -hmm. Florian? Florian, can you hear me? Okay, he cannot hear me. Uh, so I can maybe say a few words of this. So uh, we are planning to have a hydrology week here at uh, Eastern WF next, uh, next year in November. And that's uh, together with the HSAT, which is the U.S. Satellite Application Facility. Uh, which support Operation Hydrology. And the, this HEPEX workshop uh, is to really show the showcase uh, methods in pre-processing of the uh, uh, weather predictions, the input to hydrology and forecasting chains, and uh, to demonstrate data simulation in operational and hydrometeorological forecasting chains. And uh, we'll have uh, advi uh, scientific advisory boards in terms of Albert Vets, and uh, we're also looking for other volunteers that have organized this. And uh, more details can be shown uh, on this link here, or you can also go to the blog to see more on this. Florian, can you hear me? Yes, thank you very much. I'm really okay, sorry. My connection seems to drop constantly. Okay. Um, Merry Christmas, and I think Fred said everything there is to say. Okay, do you want to add something more on this? No, because I didn't even hear you, so it's fine. Okay. All right then. So um, that is the last point for, for uh, this seminar. This was a bit different today. We had many speakers, and the technology wasn't always with us at all times, but I hope that uh, you catch caught most of it, what we're talking about today. So this is really looking forward to what's happening next year and uh, in retrospect from, from last year. So. As John and the others have been saying today, there's been a lot of work going on. And those people who put it together have really done a great job. And uh, I hope that we can continue next year with, with as many uh, events. So this next year will be really the, the um, 10 year anniversary. So that would be a great event to see each other again. 
And the webinars will come back next year. We only have planning for January and February. So, but if you have other things to um, contribute to, we'll talk about, please uh, send an email to me and we we'll have a chance to do a webinar. And we'll also have guest columnists, columnists on the blog starting next year as well. So from all of us, a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, and uh, I also leave the floor open if somebody else wants to say something or have any comments. So please. Uh, yeah, this is John. Just one. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Can, yes, uh, just one quick uh, thing um, that wasn't on our agenda. Just to mention, the, this coming year, we will. Uh, many of us will be spending a lot of our time. Uh, producing input for the new HAPEX book on hydrologic ensemble prediction that uh, Ching Yun Zhuan in China is leading. Uh, and I am really impressed with the kinds of things that are being put together and with his, by the way, with his also with his leadership of that work. And it'll be published, the plan is to have it published uh, in 2015. So uh, we have that one, that to look forward to as well. So it'll be a busy year for everyone. Yes, thank, thank you, John. You. Yeah, that was uh, good uh, that you mentioned that as well. So, and uh, I think there's still opportunities if you want to contribute to this. Uh, John, do you want to say a bit more about maybe the content of it so people understand how this uh, how this Um I'm not sure what to say. Uh, the um, I don't know if there's information about that book on the web. There must be somewhere. Do you know? Uh, does anyone know if there's something on the on our website somewhere to let people see what's going on there? I don't know. I I proved that I don't know a lot of things. I didn't know we had that very nice agenda, uh, Yuda, uh, for the meeting with the games in there. I hadn't paid attention to that. So uh, <laughs> that is a lot I don't know. So I'm not sure I'm the best. I wish I could do that, uh, Frederick, but I don't know enough to be uh, to do that. Okay, Florian, do you want to say anything about that? I don't think I've got anything to add at the moment. Um, I think we're going to do a plot on the HEPIC website very soon, and we're going to have more details on that book. Okay, so we can say at the moment that we. Uh, more information will come on the blog, of course, where everything is posted. On the internet. But there, there's a plan on uh, on topics, and they will cover everything from meteorology down to uh, decision making in terms of hydraulic or some predictions. So a very extensive guidebook, you could say, on on, the, on everything that has to do with ensemble predictions and hydraulic applications. So. Uh, does anybody want to say anything more before we end the seminar? Otherwise, I wish you all a happy uh, holidays and uh, see you again next year. Thank you for listening. Thank you, too. Thank you.